Hello everybody and welcome back. Let's talk about the problem next smallest palindrome. This is one of those questions where it is absolutely loaded with edge cases upon edge cases and so it becomes hard to solve this problem. But I'm going to explain a simple logical solution that you can use to get it accepted. All right, let's get started with the problem discussion. All right, let's quickly talk about the problem statement first. We're given the input as a string, which is going to be a string called A. And the goal of this problem, the output which you want to get, is a string representing the next smallest palindrome after A. All right, the constraints also mention that the length of this string is not more than 100 characters. And let's look at some examples. So we have uh, 23545, which becomes 23632. So after 23545, the next smallest palindrome is 23632. And after 99, it is 101. All right, super simple uh, in terms of what's given to us. Now let's actually uh, start thinking about how to reach to a solution. As I already said, this question is one of those which has a lot of edge cases. So it's a good idea to split test cases out whenever we can. In our case, I'm going to split them out into odd and even cases. And that's because of how palindromes work. You see, in a case like that of an odd length, we have 122 becoming 131. Now 131 is a palindrome because it is mirrored across this center point, right? So three is the center and then whatever is on the left hand side is copied to the right hand side. Odd cases have this central middle element while well, even do not. In the case of 1337, we have the answer as 1441. It is perfectly mirrored around this center point over here where 14 here becomes 41 there. So it's a good idea to split them out into odd and even cases. And now we'll pick odd cases first and uh, try to build our solution from it. All right, let's actually start talking about odd cases. We'll take the case of 97531. Now, since we know for a fact that we have to find the next smallest palindrome, we're trying to make this number a palindrome. Now, we also know that 5 is the middle element. So let's actually not touch this 5. And what we need to do is somehow reflect whatever the values on the left side are to the values on the right side, right? So this will look something like this, where we have uh, five in the middle, not touched, but then nine, seven over here, nine, seven on the left hand side gets copied to uh, seven, nine on the right hand side, right? We're just reflecting the entire number in the middle. All right, so super simple, right? What did we do? We copied the left to the right, of course, flipping the right, and we kept the middle as is. We did not disturb the five since it was the middle element, the central point of our flipping. All right, so cool, we're done, right? Uh, let's actually take a look at some more examples. So let's say that we have the case of two, three, five, four, five. Now what will happen if we repeat the same logic? We have two, three over here and five in the middle. So let's just keep five as is. We won't disturb 5 and the 2, 3 here will become 3, 2 on this side. So we'll have something of this sort, right? 2, 3, 5, 3, 2. But this is incorrect. Wait, what? That's correct. We have 4, 5 over here and we have 3, 2 over here. This number 2, 3, 5, 3, 2 is smaller than this number 2, 3, 5, 4, 5. What it means is this is actually not a valid answer. We have to find the next smallest palindrome, not the last one. All right. Uh, how do we fix this though? We want to keep 3, 2 over here. We have to somehow ensure that 3, 2 comes over here, but we have 4, 5 over here. So what we can do is we can take the same number and we can add 1 to it. We can take this 5 and make it to a 6. So now we have 23632, which is indeed the correct answer for 23545. All right, so what did we note over here? We're still copying the left to the right, of course, flipping, but we have this 23, which gets copied over here to 32. But in this case, we have done middle plus one. So hold on, copying the left to the right was the same between the last two cases, but when do we do middle and when do we do middle plus one? Let's see by putting them side by side. 
So in the first case, we have 97531, which becomes, which becomes 97579 and 23545 becomes 23632. One thing to observe is we're copying the left to the right in both the cases. That's fine. But in this case, the 97 over here is greater than the 31 over here, which means that we can take this 97 and we can flip it around and just put it over there. In this case, however, the 23 is smaller than 45, which means that if we reverse this, we would actually have a number smaller than the this current number, which means that we need to do middle plus one. All right, so we're still doing copying left to the right. And then we'll say if left is greater than right, if 97 is greater than 31, then keep the mid as is. If not, in the else condition, we have the second case where you simply do mid plus one. All right, cool. So we're done with the odd cases, right? Well, not so fast. Let's take a look at one more example. We'll keep this rule in mind and we'll try to see what happens for the case of 53545. Five, five. All right. All right. Uh, feel free to take a pen and paper, write it down, see what happens. So in the case of 53545, five, 5 is the middle element. We'll have 5, 3 over here, which gets reflected to 3, 5 over here. But do you notice? 5, 3 is greater than 4, 5, sure. So left is greater than right, which means that we need to keep the middle element. But if you notice, this number is smaller than this number. This is incorrect. What happened over here? Let's try to break the number down. Now, in the case of 5, 3, 5, 4, 5, we'll split it out in three different parts. So we have the left over here, mid over here, and the right over here. When we make the flip, when we copy the left to the right, we are actually going to move it over here and we're going to flip it, right? So this 53 is actually going to become 35, which means that we don't compare the left to the right, but we compare the reversed of the left with the right. This is a key point. We don't compare left to right, but the reversed of the left to the right. So we'll copy the left to the right. That's cool. That's fine. But we'll keep in mind this. If the reverse of the left is greater than right, then we can keep the mid. Else we do plus one. And now you can take this rule, apply it on the previous uh, cases and it will work fine. But of course, you know, one edge case solved, another edge case comes. So let's actually move forward and look at one more interesting case that is going to make life tough. In the case of 13937, what do we do? We know that we want to copy the left to the right. Cool. And we'll say that if the reverse of left is greater than right, we'll keep mid. So is the, okay, so the left is 13, which means that the reverse of left is 31. Now is 31 greater than 37? False. So we'll go to the else condition where we have mid plus one, which means that we want to do nine plus one. Uh, how do we do that? The thing is, uh, we can create an intermediate state. We can say that, you know, 13937 first goes to 14037. And by the way, just a quick note, it's a good idea to like pair the left, which is 13 and the mid, which is nine together. So we're not looking at 13 and then nine separately. We're just looking at that as 139. So this 139 plus one becomes 140. And now we can continue with the same logic. Now, since we have resolved this intermediate state, 1407, uh, 14037 will become what? So again, 14's reverse is uh, 41 and 41 is greater than 47. So we'll keep the mid as is, we'll keep the zero cool and we'll get the final answer as 14041. All right, makes sense. So we'll want to do this mid plus one with care. That's all. All right. So this is actually it. I promise we have no more edge cases left. The odd cases say that we have to keep a couple of rules in mind. Sure. Our goal is to copy the left to the right, but we'll keep in mind that we want to compare the reversed of the left, the reversed of the left with the right, keeping the mid constant and else we'll want to do mid plus one with the care, of course for handling the cases with nine in the middle. All right. Now we have fully resolved odd cases. 
can we move on to the even cases now? Okay, let's see what happens in the even cases then. So let's take an example again as usual. We'll see what happens by always taking an example. So in this case, we have 1, 3, 3, 7, right? Uh, the palindrome is going to form by this middle point over here. So we're going to mirror this uh, entire number through this middle point. How do we do that? Uh, well, can we kind of use the same logic we saw before? Like we can still compare the left to the right, right? There is no issue of middle element now. It's actually simpler for us. So what we can do is we can compare left to the right. And, uh, you know, since 13 is reverse is 31 and 31 is lesser than 37, we can increase it to 14. And now 14 gets reversed to 41. Basically, we use the same exact logic as we used previously. But now we don't have to worry about the mid at all. Super cool, right? All right, uh, before we get too excited, I actually want to test it out. You know, let's take a case which has a bunch of nines and we'll see if this logic still holds up. All right, uh, feel free to pause the video and try it out for yourself. What will happen in the case of 89.99? Well, 89's reverse is going to be 98 and uh, 98 is lesser than 99. So what do we do? We want to do a plus one. So we'll have to do 90 over here, right? 89 becomes 90 and we can just reverse the 90 over here to become 09. So yes, indeed, this is the correct answer. We'll get the answer as 9009 for 8999. All right. So this is the final logic or rules for even cases. And we are pretty much done. We are almost done. We are, uh, we still have one very weird edge case remaining. See, we have resolved even cases and odd cases, but we haven't resolved what would happen if we have palindromes. You see, if we get a number like 1337, we've already seen how to resolve it. We'll get 1441 works perfectly. But if we have a case like 99, what would happen? 99 will be treated as an even length case. And uh, if we look at how it is going to get treated, Feel free to write it down, by the way, uh, use these rules over here to create the next smallest palindrome for 99. And you'll realize that the next smallest palindrome for 99 bar by our logic is going to give you 99 itself. Which means that this idea will not work for palindromes. So we'll need to handle the palindrome separately. Now, one super sneaky way to handle this, one super sneaky way is well, just take this 99 and uh, convert it to 100. Just do plus 1 and now 100 becomes just like any other number. 100 is of course a case of odd length, so we'll use the rules for the odd length case. And that's it. We're really done. Uh, so we're doing the entire logic in three different steps. Firstly, we're going to handle the cases for palindromes. So if we detect the current number is a palindrome, we are just going to do plus 1. And now since this becomes just like any other number, we can again go for the even odd split as we saw in the very previous cases, right? These are the basic rules for the odd cases. And these are the rules for the even cases. All right, enough talking. Let's actually get to the coding part. 